Hey everybody, Brian Germain here. I wanted to uh, start this video off showing a coordinated turn. What do we mean by that? When you're maneuvering an airplane, if you do it in a balanced way with yaw and roll, in balance, your weight loads straight down. Look at that water, completely level, because the load is going straight through the floor of the airplane, which means your lines and your parachute will be loading equally as well. So let's look at how that relates to a toggle turn. So when you just pull down a toggle with zero harness input, you're giving primarily yaw axis input, which rotates the canopy a little ahead of you, and it can uh, very easily make the airflow uh, have a bit of an angle with respect to the rib line, which creates turbulence, which means that you don't get an immediate effect uh, to adding brakes after you've started the turn. It means that you're loading uh, the inside of the turn more than you are the outside of the turn, and you're more likely to get a collapse. You get oscillations, especially when you do toggle manipulations uh, on final approach. So uh, to, to clean that up, you gotta start off with sitting down properly so you can give uh, good harness input. So when you dangle with your legs down like that, you get a steeper glide ratio from the increased drag value at the bottom of the system. Um, and when you sit down, um, you're you're just uh, obviously a lot more comfortable. You can rest with your legs crossed. Um, but also when you give a, a, a toggle turn, right, rather than just digging down with your hand um, and creating this kind of you know, weird uh, oscillation, you know, strange, uh, strange effects that, that you really don't want. You're not flying a coordinated turn. You're flying an uncoordinated turn where the parachute isn't facing straight into the relative wind. Right? So most people, that's kind of how they fly their turns. Now, if you're very gentle with a toggle turn, the, the yaw and roll kind of happen uh, in balance and uh, you don't have problems with it. But if you dig it real sharply, the yaw happens first and the canopy will sort of twist on you a little bit, and slide sideways through the sky. But if you look and lean into the turn and then give toggle input, and I recommend uh, doing uh, like is demonstrated here where you just play around with only harness input to get a feel for it to see it if it's having an effect. A, a complete coordinated turn is the equivalent of giving aileron and rudder input on an airplane. Harness then toggle is like giving aileron uh, and then rudder pedal. And as a result the parachute's facing straight into the relative wind where the rib line is uh, is parallel to the relative wind. So the air is following the valleys of those ribs um, and you get a much cleaner airflow over the wing and you have access to instant lift. The parachute is now uh, balanced in the loading across the whole span of the canopy. Uh, and so you, you end up flying a cleaner maneuver through the sky. And so if you were to uh, sort of play around with this, initially you kind of give it gentle turns, but then you can dig deeper into this and sharper harness and then toggle again, you know, sort of leaning forward, looking into the turn, peeking around the corner into your future so that you don't you know, surprise yourself with uh, a canopy that was there that you didn't see always look into the turn. Um, but you're going to get the feel for this. If you play around with it a lot and you kind of make it normal uh, where every single turn has load, you know, increased load towards the inside of the turn where you're twisting your hips into it, kind of like that, that steering wheel from your pelvis. You're reaching down with one leg, up with the other hip, uh, and kind of driving around that turn with offsetting of the harness, which brings, brings one three ring down, if you think of it that way, the one on the inside of the turn. Um, and most parachutes will, will respond to this. It may not be uh, aggressive, but it'll do it. So look at, let's look at a traditional flat turn where you go to the brakes and then you look into the turn, you give a little harness input and then you offset your toggles. Um, the deeper you are in the brakes, you're going to want to focus on lifting the outside toggle as opposed to depressing the inside toggle so you're not going uh, so close to the stall. When you increase the load factor as a result of the turn, you can increase the chances of stalling. Um, so you're going to want to play with that, and, and in the brakes you're going to want to give harness input and sort of experiment with that. Um, so this is a, a different kind of turn that most people don't do, uh, but I think it's worth playing with, where you give opposite harness and toggle to turn. It, it turns real slow, but it, it turns actually pretty flat. Um, it's not something you'd want to do close to the ground. It's 
uh, not you know, quite as stable. It's not a coordinated turn, of course, uh, but it, it can be useful. And I think, you know, to, for a, a pilot to really explore their airplane in every way is important. Um, so this is uh, making turns where you've got a little bit of breaks, uh, where you, you might choose to fly your pattern where you're, you're in some breaks and you make that turn to final approach, you keep the brakes, and then you flare from, you know, just kind of coming straight out of that turn right into the flare with a little bit of oomph. You might have to go deeper in the toggles than you would in a full flight flare because you have less energy in the system. But it, I think it's an important thing to, to be able to uh, develop that skill of making a turn, adding brakes, uh, you know, sort of sharply and leveling off right away. Um, so let's look one, one more time at, at this harness turn where you sort of dig into it. Now this is a very small parachute and so there doesn't uh, have to be so much input. You don't have to really twist your hips that far uh, on this little 71 square foot sensei. But on your canopy you might have to exaggerate it. All right? So uh, let's, you know, kind of, if you notice this is just sort of playing around with the flaring. Uh, you can see how if you give a, a sharp input on the brakes, it, you don't have to pull that far to achieve level flight. To feel that weight gain, that's your indication that you change direction of flight from down and forward to just forward with no descent rate. So I think everybody should play with varying speeds of the flare input. So here showing a nice coordinated turn, adding brakes in the middle of the turn, and then going straight into a flare another great drill that's very important. I think any canopy course should include this, and even if you're not in a canopy course, to fly a braking turn and then go straight into the flare and see how deep you have to go in those brakes to achieve level flight, given the fact that you've lost a little airspeed from being in brakes. Um, you might have to go a little sharper and a little bigger with your motion of your hands to achieve level flight, but again, if you listen to your weight, if you gain significant amounts of weight in the flaring process, you probably leveled off or close to it. The other thing is to work on leaning forward. So as you flare for landing, your parachute goes behind you. So when you add the brakes, it's gonna to wanna to throw your feet out in front of you. So you thrust your head forward and your hands back, and that will allow you to, to remain upright uh, so that you're, you're able to run out your landing. And splitting your feet front and back will be very helpful for preparing to run, but if it's not a good landing, Obviously, you want to switch into bringing your feet together if you can and rolling. PLF is a wonderful thing. Uh, so if you notice the, the body position here in the turn in this pattern, the head is forward, right? You can barely see the head because leaning forward affords you more visibility in the pattern. You can see more of what's going on. Um, so, you know, turning to final approach, if you're a little bit on the high side, if you're in traffic, you don't want to do big S turns, but a little bit of sort of wandering back and forth uh, using coordinated turns can help to, to shorten the distance that you travel across the ground. Um, so here you can see a little bit of ballooning out at, at the turn to final because there was a little excess altitude. You can see that on the ground track. Um, so here's a, a, the faster parachute flying a basic pattern um, and you know, you're kind of looking down into your left in this case, right? So he's over the runway gently turning to final approach. You don't have to do anything radical to get a good landing. You just have to uh, make a coordinated move, maneuver to final, level off, lean forward, split your feet and start running or rolling as is appropriate. And so. Um, I think it's also, uh, I, I, I can't emphasize enough the, the need for everybody to work on slowing down your canopy, getting used to flying it in brakes, to, let's say, fly a pattern into an unlo unlo unknown location. It's very helpful because you don't lose as much altitude. You have more time in the process. Um, and flying in brakes also affords you the ability to extend your glide ratio across the ground provided that you have a substantial tailwind. By slowing down the canopy and holding it in brakes and just pointing with the wind, you're going to go a lot further than if you were just sinking, simply because you're staying in the sky longer. It doesn't change your true glide ratio dramatically, it just changes the amount of time you're in the sky. If you don't have that tailwind, rear risering is the way to go and you're going to want to play around with the amount of rear risers that is appropriate 
uh, and the ideal location to maximize the glide assuming no wind is going to be about a little more than halfway between no input on the rears and, uh, and actually the stall point. And so if you slowly add those rear risers down, 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 eventually you'll reach a point where the parachute drops behind you and it'll be very obvious you know that you stalled it, so you lift your hands a little. And then maybe do that a couple times so you can figure out where that point is where the stall is, so you can figure out where a little more than half is in terms of the input. Um, and so each time you find yourself with a long spot, you're going to have to look at the ground speed to determine if going to the deep brakes is the way to go to extend your glide. So you look at that destination point on the ground, the point that's not moving, and then you maybe add brakes. You know, if you've got a strong tailwind, that's the way to go. If you don't see a lot of ground speed, well, then maybe the way to go would be the rear risers because that actually improves your true glide ratio. So here, demonstrating some stalls. Um, deep brakes, deep brakes, deep brakes, and then you hold your heading, lift your hands just a little, and then sort of keep them down in the recovery. So if you lift your hands aggressively as the canopy actually trashes on you, you can have a very aggressive surge and go to zero Gs. So you want to uh, sort of prepare for that upward burst of, of load on your brake lines and prevent your hands from getting pulled back up. You just lift them a little. Um, so sitting down in the harness, spotting the target, keeping your eye on it, but also looking for traffic. You might have to turn away a little bit on your base leg if you're too high. Keep looking at the target as you turn to final. Don't whip that turn so that you can see as you make that turn towards final, oh, the target's dropping or the target is rising. If it's rising on you, that means you need a little rears. If it's sinking on you, that means that you need to either do a little sachet or balloon to the outside of the pattern. Big sachets are called S-turns and it's not recommended if you're in traffic, right? If you're landing off the drop zone or you're doing a hop and pop all alone, okay, sachets, uh, uh, and even aggressive uh, S-turns where you're turning 90 and then 180 can be helpful for sure, but don't do that in traffic, please. The other thing I want to mention about flying the pattern is, is as you're looking at it and as you're making your maneuvers, breathe, relax, trust yourself, relax everything in your body you don't need, and then level that canopy off with power. This was fun. Thanks for joining. Have a wonderful day. Happy landings. So what do you choose? Love or fear?